Welcome to Pastor Andrew's Inspirations. If you're enjoying these messages, please click the subscribe button below for new inspirations. Tell your friends and share my links. Today, we will be talking about the second coming and peacefulness. Men have continually daydreamed of a golden age. Plato and his nation imagined a time when the twisted things in life would be made straight. Bacon imagined Atlantis would be a place of worldwide serenity and success. Presidents have imagined paradise in plans like the New Deal, the New Frontier, the Great Society, the New World Order, and I have a dream. However, the Golden Age is not going to be guided in by man's times tables, tactics, and testaments. It will not occur because of man's contracts and creeds, rules and regulations, or his conventions and consultations. This time will be carried out only when Jesus comes to rule and reign upon the earth. Only throughout the millenarian reign of Jesus will glory and joy be finally found. The covenant of the time is based upon a promise. There are different kinds of promises in the Bible. There are certain oaths that were made to specific men of God. God will continually fulfill his oaths and promises, whether made to a man, men, or a nation. There are basically two kinds of promises. The conditional promise. Here God lays down exact conditions before the promise is fulfilled. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Notice there are clear conditions to be met before the joys are experienced. If my people, then God. Next, the unconditional promises. There are also absolute promises. One was the promise God made to David that he was going to establish a kingdom through David's offspring that would never be overthrown. It is found in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. This will be achieved when Jesus sits on the throne during the time because Jesus is of the lineage of David. Now, you can find that to be true in Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, where it reads, The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And again in Luke chapter 1, verses 31 and 32, where it is printed, And behold, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call him by the name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Another absolute promise is found in Daniel chapter 2 verses 31 to 34, 
where it reads, Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Nebuchadnezzar imagined a great illustration. This illustration was a picture of the earth's powers that would rule the world until Jesus comes back to set up his millenarian kingdom. In that revelation are seen the Babylonians signified by the gold. Daniel 3 states that Nebuchadnezzar made that golden representation. The silver signifies the reign of the Medes and Persians. The brass signified the Greeks and Roman rulers. Then Daniel said there was coming a ruler whose feet were part iron and part clay. Obviously, this is a natural feebleness, the mixture of iron and clay. This signifies the Antichrist. He will be a world ruler. The ten toes represent the ten nations that will play a part in his alliance. The sign of the beast will be active. In Daniel 2 verse 34 it reads, Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. This mystifying stone is the Lord Jesus Christ. All through the Bible Jesus is denoted as the stone or the rock. You can find this in Genesis chapter 49 verse 24 where it reads, but his bow abode in strength and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd the stone of Israel. In Psalm 118 verse 22 where it reads the stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. In Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16 where it reads therefore thus saith the Lord God behold I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone a tried stone a precious cornerstone a sure foundation he that believeth shall not make haste and in 1st Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 where it reads and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to terminate the works of blackness at the battle of Armageddon. He will annihilate all adverse adversaries and take his rightful place as ruler of the world. Now, please keep in mind that our Savior's second coming in the air was to catch away the saints. He will come to Mount Olivet and fight against the devil and hellish forces of the world. The Bible says the blood will flow as high as the horse's reins. It will be a dreadful time of carnage and bloodshed for the whole world. Jesus will crush the feet of the iron and clay powers. This is the promise of the time. Next we see the extent of the time. Now we want to discuss the extent of the time. How long is it? 
The word time is not found in the Bible, but its lesson is shown. A handful may claim that if the word cannot be found, then its lesson cannot be educated. However, the words trinity, meaning trio or three in one, and rapture, meaning delight, joy, or bliss, are not recorded either, but their realities are educated. Two Latin words are employed here, milli and anum. The word milli means 1000 and anum means year. Combine them and you have 1000 years. Basically, there are three different views as to when the rapture of the saints will happen and the time will begin. Next there is the post-millenarian view. Some theologians think that Jesus will come after the time is over. They think the world will keep growing healthier before Jesus returns to establish his earthly kingdom. It is noticeable that the world is not growing healthier, but it is getting worse. That is the post-millenarian view. Then there is the amillenarian view. A means no 1,000 years or no time. Some theologians promote that the 1,000 year period is non-literal and not exact. It is a picture of the spiritual conflict, but not of the literal. So, they promote their will never be an exact 1,000 year period. However, Luke chapter 1 verse 31 to 33 defeats this opinion because these verses are verbatim and not non-literal. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. Now that verse is literal. It happened and was written about. There is no doubt about it. Jesus was conceived and was carried into this world. Now verse 32 and 33 say, He shall be great. There is no disbelief about that. He is great. And shall be called the Son of the Highest. No disbelief here either. He is the Son of the Highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. If you are going to take the first part of these verses to be accurate, you must take the rest of these verses to be accurate also. It is unlikely for an interpreter of scripture to switch horses in the middle of the creek. Luke declares that Jesus is going to come. He is going to be the son of the highest. He is going to be majestic and reign upon David's throne. If you trust that Jesus came, was the son of the highest, and was born by the Holy Spirit, and is the son of God, you have to trust that the rest of it is going to be achieved as well. One day he will come back and he will establish his kingdom. That is the amillennium view. Next there is the premillenarian view. The Bible clearly explains that Jesus will rapture the church before the start of the millenarian period. Straight away, following the rapture of the saints, the judgment seat of Christ transpires in heaven where the believers give account of how they live their lives as Christians. At the same time upon the earth a seven year period of misery takes place, chiefly to prepare the Jewish 
to receive Jesus as their true Messiah when he returns to this earth with his saints. At the end of the misery, the Lord will return to earth with the saints to destroy the Antichrist and to set up his rule upon the earth for 1,000 years. That is the premillenarian view. Next we see the success of the time. We have now seen the covenant of the time and the extent of the time. Allow me to describe another aspect, which is the success of the time. Satan is going to be chained. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 and 2, it reads, And I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key of the abyss, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Satan will be bound. Do you know how wonderful that will be? There will be no more dishonesty and uprising brought on by the devil himself for a thousand years. Satan will be bound, which tells me two things. First, there is a devil. Secondly, he is loose. He is loosed upon this planet to bring revolution, dishonesty, all kinds of secret practices, all kinds of idolization, and all kinds of sin. Then in one day, he will be bound for a thousand years. But while Satan is bound, peace on earth will thrive. Peace will abound. In Isaiah chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, the prophet dialogues about a time when peace will abound. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears unto pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. What a day that is going to be. They will learn war no more. They'll not learn how to fight, but how to fellowship. In Micah chapter 4 verse 4 it reads, But they shall sit every man under his vine, and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts hath spoken it. For all the people will walk everyone in the name of his God. And we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and forever. See, Satan is going to be found and peace will abound on earth. Nature will be unbound. Paul wrote in Romans, chapter 8 verse 19 to 21 for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Nature is ready and waiting for Jesus to come back. The animal kingdom is going to be altered. We find this in Isaiah chapter 11 verses 6 to 9. And the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf 
and the young lion and the fatling together and the little child shall lead them and the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox and the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den in other words nature will be unbound then he says in verse 9 they shall not turn they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea the animal kingdom now lives by the fang and claw it is driven by the survival of the fittest but one day when Jesus comes to establish his kingdom Satan is going to be bound peace will abound and nature will be unbound what a day that is going to be when the time becomes real things will be different so we have seen the covenant the extent and the success of the time but there is one more aspect that we must deal with and that is about the people of the time there are going to be two classes of people the first class of people are the reigners you find this in Revelation 20 where John says that God's people are going to reign over the world the reigners will include the Old Testament Saints all Saints who were raptured before the tribulation and all believers who were martyred in the tribulation period who did not bow and bend to the pressures of the Antichrist these are going to be the reigners all the others will be the remainers all of those who live through the pandemics agonies hardships troubles and ailments of the tribulation will be guided into the millenarian kingdom they will not pass away until some further point in the millenarian kingdom they will not they they will have went through the tribulation and into the time they may even be gone astray they may not know Christ as Savior but their revolution and their refutation will be curbed by the authority of Christ's rule and reign in his earthly kingdom the extent of the kingdom is summed up when Isaiah says of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end the growth of this millenarian empire will emerge when Jesus sits on his throne all will be altered when Jesus comes back to rule and reign upon the earth it is going to be diverse when Jesus comes back again the first time he came Jesus rode a donkey the next time he's going to ride a white stallion the first time he stood before Pilate this time Pilate will stand before him at first Jesus was overruled at the last every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord at Christ's first advent he wore a crown of thorns at his second he will wear the crowns of glory the world is going to change when Jesus arranges his millenarian kingdom Hollywood and glitz will be replaced with sanctity and saintliness when Jesus returns he will be in full control as controller of the colossal commander of the captors chief of the policymakers presider over all leaders the Prince of Princes and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords he is returning with all power with pastoral policies and will establish his millenarian kingdom upon the earth he will govern and rule as Supreme Lord of all as we close we should ask ourselves if we are serving Jesus as we should are we ready for the coming of Christ the marriage supper of the Lamb and the millenarian reign of Christ upon this planet 
our leadership and place of service during the millenarium kingdom will be based upon how we live and serve Jesus today. What about those who do not know Jesus? Are they ready to atone of their sins, to submit their will and ways to Christ, and to ask Jesus to become the Lord and Savior of their life? Are they ready for the coming of Jesus? Suddenly, Jesus will return and call his bride home. The marriage supper of the Lamb could begin tomorrow. Soon, Christ's millenarian kingdom could be founded. Life will be entirely changed. His coming could be tonight. In this journey of peacefulness, we are assigned to serve our Savior by being faithful for Him. We live our lives being inspired to create a peaceful temple for the Holy Spirit to twist in His direction for His living needs. We serve with prayer, love, relief of sorrow of others, and honest relations. May our Savior Jesus Christ grant to each of us the directions to happiness and strength to continue in every peaceful good work. Be one with the Lord. Read or listen to the Bible every day. Pray often, even if it is just to get something you may need. These thoughts are all for the congregation of this channel with my deepest respect and my prayers that they may strengthen our happiness, our faith, and uplift our hearts. Let God turn your life into peacefulness. Adonai Nisi, the Lord is our banner. God's blessings be upon us all and have a great week.